Um, I'm going to talk about problems related to naturally fractured reservoirs. We may agree that uh, most hydrocarbon reservoirs are fractured enough to be treated as fractured reservoirs. Fault is not a line or a plane. The effective part of the fault is the fault damage zone. And we may agree that damage zones need to be detected, not predicted and simulated. And not all small scale fault sizes have positive impact on exploration and development. Damage zones represent the accommodation of strain around the large faults and are the products of fault propagation, displacement, and linking processes operating during the life of the fault zone. We have three types, chip damage zone, wall damage zone, linking damage zone. General problems, faulted reservoirs are more complex to drill, they are more difficult to produce, and the behavior of fluid flow is hard to predict. We have four types of naturally fractured reservoir. The first one is natural fractures provide essential porosity and permeability. The problem caused often a rapid decline curve, possible early water encroachment, size and shape of drainage area is difficult to determine. Um, it causes two uh, problems like reserve calculations difficult to constrain, Mainly the many development wells add rate but not additional reserves. And to minimize uh, these problems, delineation of fracture system intensity and extent, as well as ultimate reservoir volume. The second type where natural fractures provide essential permeability. Problem caused poor fracture and matrix porosity. Communication leads poor to poor matrix recovery and disastrous secondary recovery. Um, possible early water encroachment, production rate may need to be controlled. Um, another problem, fracture intensity and deep critical. Development pattern must be tailored to the reservoir. Recovery factor difficult to determine and quite variable. Fracture closure is over pressured in over pressured reservoirs may occur. To minimize these uh, problems, the doc documentation involvement of matrix and fracture interaction and optimum development patterns. The third type is natural fracture provides permeability assist to the reservoir. Uh, problem called highly anisotropic permeability, often unusual response in secondary recovery, 
Drainage areas often highly elliptical. Um, often interconnected reservoirs. Correlation between log core analysis and well test performance often poor. To minimize this problem, the recognition of the fracture system, especially during secondary development planning. The force type where natural fractures provide no additional permeability to the reservoir. Problem caused reservoir compartmentalization, wells underperform compared to matrix capabilities, recovery factor highly variable across the field, permeability anisotropy opposed to other adjacent fractured reservoirs of other fracture type. To minimize these problems, we need to the identification of the created flow barriers. Thank you for listening. Please visit optimalreservoirs.com. Contact me. Adel Elfoli. Thank you.